So I'm going to give it one more minute, and we'll get underway, because I know I'm the only thing standing between you and the after party. And um, uh, good afternoon. My name is Jeff Borek, and I'm a program director for IBM, the Systems and Technology Group for Cloud Computing. And to hear, I'm here this afternoon to talk to you about what we're up to with respect to OpenStack. And I felt the pressure before the uh, session started because uh, this was one of the few topics that people were actually blogging about. Some analysts, uh, I think from Giga, was saying one of the things they wanted to find out was, what, what, what is IBM doing with uh, OpenStack? So if you're here, you're going to find out over the next uh, 40 minutes. And uh, I want to make this interactive, so if you have a question, uh, during the session, feel free to interject, and we'll also have some time, I'm sure, after we're done to handle some additional Q&A. So quickly, we're going to go into IBM Cloud Computing and what we're doing with uh, IBM Smart Cloud, and then talk about IBM's overall approach to uh, cloud open standards development. We're going to talk about what we're doing to help advance OpenStack, and we're also going to talk about just you know, IBM's view of ex exactly how exciting OpenStack is and why we're here, uh, the development and the contributions that we're making on the part of uh, our clients in order to provide flexibility and choice. So the key takeaway from this, and you're all well aware, but uh, fundamentally, cloud is enabling a much more rapid response and a much more uh, efficient way to deliver IT services. It's not a panacea, and yet it's still significant enough, even though it's in the early stages, that clients are seeing a lot of tangible benefits to it. We think that's going to continue over the next uh, weeks, months, and uh, next couple of years. And IBM's already established a significant track record with providing our clients enterprise-grade cloud solutions, uh, we think that the impact of open source in this space is going to be huge. And we've been monitoring this activity uh, for the last couple of years and looking at how we could uh, get involved from an open source community perspective. But before we go into more details about that, um, this is just a high-level overview structure of how IBM goes to market currently with respect to cloud. Cloud's a major theme of IBM's over, how many have heard of IBM's smarter computing theme and that message over in the past? Smarter computing is really comprised of cloud, but also uh, data and uh, HPC. So you're going to see cloud as the forefront of smarter computing. And with respect to IBM Smart Cloud, it's broken down into foundation, services and solutions. So how many of your, you here are familiar with the IBM SO organization or strategic outsourcing? Give us the keys, we'll run it for you. So when SO heard cloud a couple of years ago, uh, selective hearing on the part, they really said, no, you, you really think, you're really thinking strategic outsourcing. Give us the keys, we'll run it for you. And yet, SO and GTS has seen a significant shift in the way they go to business or go to market in solutioning uh, with their clients. So you'll see both services in the center column in the form of infrastructure and platform as a service, but you're also going to see a lot more from IBM in the form of SaaS or software and BP or business process as a service offerings from IBM GTS going forward. That's all under the Smart Cloud umbrella. The foundational elements, which from an STG perspective I'm most closely associated with, those are the elements or piece parts that customers select from to build their own private cloud solutions. And IBM's uh, very, very involved with many of our Fortune 1000 clients in helping them build out cl private cloud infrastructure on-prem today as they prepare to move forward with cloud computing. So what we've found in looking at cloud is that we've seen this before. This seems like a very logical extension of the way the industry goes. One way of looking at it is kind of everything old is new again. 
Uh, how many remember um, the uh, time sharing on the old uh, mainframe infrastructure where you had a, basically a dumb terminal and you had to use a green screen? So transaction systems and the mainframe and kicks went from the 60s to the 80s and a whole host of standards started to emerge as we ended that era and moved into the whole dot-com era and the web. And yet a whole other wave of standards came into place, evolved mostly from a really a grassroots perspective. <coughs> IBM's tracked this trend of you know, the web, the whole e-business and SOA phenomenon. And we believe that cloud computing is yet another wave of uh, evolution in the industry uh, and that these standards that have been evolving, IBM's been active in, uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about our philosophy about the evolution of standards and how we participate. So really, as you can see from this graphic, we look at it in terms of four major categories. Standards that are driven from innovation, and IBM's still very big in terms of believing in intellectual property. I mean, we still are a leader globally in uh, patent activity, and we think that's healthy. We think it's good for us and for our shareholders. It's also good for the industry and our clients. So we're gonna continue to innovate, uh, and cloud will certainly be part of that innovation. We also have established a cloud standards customer council because one of the things that IBM learned, particularly from its past near-death experience that's actually 15 years ago now, is that staying focused on your customer base and staying close to them and being very user-driven is an important part of how IBM goes to market and that's really in our DNA now. And so by uh, helping to found the Cloud Standards Customer Council, uh, we've continued to be customer-focused in standards development. And certainly, architecturally, um, uh, we continue to uh, look at different ways in which you can implement clouds, and we really believe that um, there isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. There isn't a silver bullet that is the right solution for every client. So we believe in a, a, a rich, uh, diverse architectural approach to crafting solutions for our clients. And then finally, the practical. And we really believe that that's a key element of what's happening here with OpenStack and the community that's formed around it over the last 24 months. Uh, we think that um, the ability to participate in this vibrant community is gonna be a very important thing for both IBM and our clients going forward. So specifically, you know, what are we doing and how does that relate to our strategy? Well, our products, the smart cloud foundation elements that clients use hardware and software components to build cloud solutions, um, again, not formed in a vacuum, formed based upon what we talked about on the prior slide. And we're now participating uh, in the OpenStack uh, community. Uh, we helped form the foundation. Uh, we've been very active in helping to provide that fundamental guidance uh, this is where, you know, I'll step back a little bit and use another analogy. Uh, it's been now, I think, about 12 years since we made the big billion-dollar bet around Linux. And I'm sure you're all familiar with that. But how many of you in the audience are familiar with the Eclipse and what we did with the Eclipse organization? So there's another example where IBM developed a bunch of code to create an in, uh, independent development environment and then subsequently realized that that code, while we could have productized it, it would have just remained a fragmented part of the overall Java uh, tooling community. Instead of doing that, we gifted up $40 million worth of intellectual property behind the code that was the IDE of Eclipse, and then stepped back and helped form that foundation that became Eclipse.org, but then truly gave up control over that foundation. And that's gone on to be a tremendous success, and it's helped unify the uh, Java tooling community. Um, yet another example of what uh, we've, pardon me? Oops, thank you very much. 
Everywhere I go, there I am. So the eclipse is yet another example. WebSphere is another example of what we've done with the Apache community to be a good community member. So we've contributed, again, back to the present day, we've contributed uh, significant uh, code to improve the stability and quality of the uh, uh, OpenStack community. We've actually earned uh, two IBMers being named as core contributors, and 124 IBMers are collaborating across divisional lines. That means it's not just some of the uh, developers that I know well from the Linux Technology Center and the STG side of the house, but it's also a number of developers from the software group organization and research and other key parts of IBM that are all coming together to contribute code to help improve the overall OpenStack solution. So four things that uh, we think are key to the continued acceleration of the OpenStack. Talked about the foundation uh, of the OpenStack Foundation and how, what we've done to help establish that. Uh, we've provided uh, leadership in the establishment of the bylaws and we're gonna continue to be a significant a part of that uh, organization. Todd Moore, uh, director in software group, is responsible for the overall uh, effort for IBM and, and serves on the foundation board. Two, we're gonna continue to expand the OpenStack ecosystem. So not only the user, pardon me, not only the user community that we talked about with the Standards Council, but there's a whole rich ecosystem of partners that IBM works with worldwide. And we intend to help bring that influence towards this community as we work together to help establish it and mature it. Two other things that we plan on doing are to continue to expand uh, IBM's activity around standards, not just the standard that's emerging around OpenStack, but other things that we're doing out in the larger community to ensure that we're going to have openness, interoperability, and customer choice associated with uh, cloud solutions that incorporate elements of OpenStack technology as we continue to collaborate. And one of the other things that we're going to uh, bring to the community is uh, infrastructure architectural diversity in the form of bringing the power product line uh, up towards the uh, community. We're working to contribute uh, drivers and other fundamental technology that'll provide additional choice of infrastructure. And while I can't give any specific dates or timelines at this point, uh, I think you're gonna see power and specifically, uh, anyone in the audience familiar with or heard of Power Linux? and the Power Linux box. Um, something that I hope you'll look into, I'll provide a link to that in just a little bit. So some additional proof points of what we're seeing with respect to interest in OpenStack and the overall community. You can see that relative to the other initiatives out there, uh, the OpenStack interest in terms of ecosystem is hitting uh, record numbers, a uh, number of monthly participants you can tell in terms of just what happened between April 2012 and September 2012 in terms of the number of companies, the number of community members, and the number of user groups, dramatic increase over that time period. And social media wise, you can see that OpenStack's social community is roughly seven times larger than the next uh, largest competitor. And over half of the CloudStack and op Open Nebula followers also follow OpenStack. So a, a lot of buzz out there in social media around interest in OpenStack. So uh, interesting, if you saw the Rackspace uh, keynote earlier today, there are a whole series of ways folks are looking at uh, contributing to the community. And IBM's really proud of the fact that we've really jumped in with both feet over the last short period here since April, we've uh, risen to be in the top five clearly, and we can, uh, we're committed to continuing to be involved with the community in providing code contribution to continue to uh, make the OpenStack solution more robust, more hardened, and more feature rich. 
So specifically, um, this is a, a, sli a slide that goes into some of the details around uh, specifics of what IBM's done in contributing to OpenStack. And I'm not going to go through all of them here, but you can see that we've contributed significant code associated with uh, uh, localization for simplified Chinese, for one example. Uh, a real tough problem, something that IBM was happy to bring forward and contribute as part of the overall stack solution. Uh, significant drivers that we've talked about, enabling hardware that we've talked about, uh, supporting uh, the development of the community from a legal perspective, uh, supporting specific code to uh, improve the uh, globalization and localization enhancements. So IBM, with its track record of being a globally integrated enterprise, has seen a lot of these challenges before in how do you work with the community and enable software in such a way that it's able to have a global impact. And IBM's committed to doing that uh, as part of what we're doing with OpenStack. Power systems, store-wise, and also the IBM XIV storage products, you're going to continue to see enablement from IBM with respect to storage. And in fact, um, the overall uh, portfolio of IBM storage, a significant portion of it is going to be enabled for uh, OpenStack utilization. And we're working, IBM Research specifically, is working on additional enhancements to the drivers as well as other ways of innovating to provide um, both a benefit to the OpenStack community, choice to the users and clients that decide to implement OpenStack, as well as a, ultimately a benefit to uh, clients that are purchasing IBM storage assets. So without making a advertisement or pre-announcing any products, just briefly mention that one of the hallmarks of IBM is we continue to provide a rich portfolio of processing platforms that clients choose from. So whether it's the newly announced PureFlex product line that was uh, announced in April and just enhanced here in the last announcement cycle uh, in October, we also have the System X or x86 product line, Power that we talked about briefly, and Power Linux, uh, all the way up to System Z and the Pure Application System. So if past activity is any indication of future performance, you can look at what we did with Linux, right? Linux started out as an experiment within IBM, mostly focused on x86, but pretty soon we had people in System Z and a Skunk Works project, and within a remarkably short period of time, you had Linux running on the mainframe. And you've had Linux running on power now for uh, a decade. So again, nothing to officially announce, but it wouldn't be surprising to see a lot of options and choice in the not too distant future with respect to uh, platforms and OpenStack from IBM. So to net it out, from a IBM capabilities perspective, we've already got over 4,000 client engagements under our belt, working with clients to solve their real world, world problems today with respect to cloud solutions built on IBM technology and technology from others. And we're going to continue to build on that. And we think that OpenStack and the ability to work with this community is going to have a big benefit for IBM clients, for the community, and, and ultimately for IBM as well. And as a proof point, I included a quote from a IBM partner and a friend of mine, Larry Augustin. IBM has en enabled us to go into markets and reach customers that we never would have been able to reach before. So we're really excited to be involved with OpenStack and the community. And we're really excited about what the next 12 to 18 to 24 months is going to bring associated with this collaboration. I mentioned before the standards, Cloud Standards Customer Council, and I just wanted to provide some links to that. We'd like to encourage you and any other user communities that 
uh, you touch to consider getting involved with this. It's another way to significantly improve the dialogue about the development of cloud solutions. And obviously you're aware of IBM uh, work with OpenStack now and what we're doing with the OpenStack user committee. So a copy of this is gonna be up on uh, the OpenStack website. Final couple of comments. One, uh, if you look at, uh, again, the power line and the Power Linux uh, system, what that is is it's a dedicated uh, low-cost line of power or risk-based processor platform for running specifically Linux workloads. And we're gonna be working not only to incorporate uh, that into the 2013 plans, but uh, I think you're going to also see IBM make a significant uh, couple of announcements in 2013. The thing I'd like to close on is that if you look at OpenStack and where it is today and where it has the potential to go, uh, IBM is not going to participate just again from a product perspective. It's not just going to be software. It's not going to be IBM services just spinning up and offering a generic uh, OpenStack solution. You're gonna see a lot of different innovation from several parts of the overall organization. And with that, I'd like to pause and see if there are any questions or comments. Please. Uh, you mentioned about the uh, the Linux, like IBM getting involved in Linux pretty early, and then you mentioned the Eclipse as well. Um, aspects of, particularly with the Linux, there's real competitive forces at play that made that very strategic. Is there any aspect to that with the OpenStack? Uh, let me see if I understand your, que your question correctly. Strategically, why are we involved with OpenStack? So, Obviously, there's a, uh, I live in Seattle, so I live in an interesting area that I can now refer to as the DMZ or the demilitarized zone between my friends in Redmond, and I've got a lot of friends in Redmond, and friends that work in Amazon in downtown Seattle. So Amazon's clearly become the market leader in public cloud, the classic you know developer with a credit card, and they've done a great job of proving a certain segment of the market, but they've also got a very close solution. So again, we think the overall industry benefits, not just IBM, but the industry at large and ultimately our customers, when IT infrastructure is built on a more open approach with flexibility and choice. And you know, I saw that uh, Amazon actually was briefly on stage uh, yesterday during, a, I think, a keynote. So I think that it's great that they're actually uh, here. But I think that, again, regardless of how they decide to evolve, clearly there's going to be a strong interest in OpenStack and the opportunity and the potential it represents and the good things that it can do for our clients. So I think that's certainly a significant part of why we're here. Question? So can you explain more about the OpenStack user committee? Um, what's the organization? How can we connect to them? So I'll give my short answer and then I'll invite um, Todd to explain a little bit more. But one of the key areas that OpenStack has become sensitive to is again, and you heard it uh, from the head of the uh, community at the opening keynote is that they're, they consider their users the key element or the key focus of what they want to do in extending the OpenStack solution. So uh, I think in the past, some other communities and or vendors have had user groups as more of an afterthought. And I think the OpenStack community wants to put the user group function in the forefront. And so the user community that I have the links for in the presentation are there to do just that. 
but I'll invite Todd if you want to expand on that briefly. So actually one of the things that was most interesting to IBM was that we had a strong focus in OpenStack with the user community and and so the user advisory board is getting spun up and becoming, you know, an integral piece of advising the board on the directions that we'd like to see the foundation go in. And uh, Tim Bell has taken that on from the standpoint of the board to, to be the representative into that. And you're going to see that get spun up. So just keep looking at the, uh, the wiki uh, on the web and you'll be able to see the links to get involved and, and become part of that. Um, because we want, uh, we want feedback uh, from the user community and uh, we want it regularly. Uh, we have to you know, meet their needs and, and that's the way we're going to go about doing it. Yeah. Great question. It brings up another interesting point as well and that's that while there's this tremendous potential for OpenStack and we clearly think that it's got a bright future ahead of it, its future isn't at all assured you know, there are other community initiatives that have faltered over time, right? And so part of the reason that IBM is here is that we really feel that this community is unique, that compared to other communities around cloud solutions in the larger open source ecosystem, that this one represents the best potential for success, not just for IBM or other participants, but ultimately again for the community and for end users. And you know, there are some others you know, we could talk about that are examples of what went wrong or what not to do. Um, IBM's been fortunate in that it's navigated through these tricky waters relatively successfully, can, especially compared to some other major vendors. You know. um, so, to that extent, we're excited to be involved and we think we will have a very positive uh, ability to impact the development of the community and try and, you know, to the extent appropriate, keep it on track. Just an, another question. Um, IBM's slide in the elevator deck yep. was unique in that it didn't link to uh, open stack related material. Um, I'm more familiar with IBM 10 years ago where I was actually with IBM and at the time for Linux, for example, there was, if, even if there wasn't uh, productization at a partic particular point, there was a huge amount of uh, resources through developer works and other right. research type things. And I found that uh, today when I was searching for IBM on, on IBM's websites, uh, it's, there's pretty few, you can really see the uh, contributions from within the community, but from outside it, there's, there's just not that much on like, the website today. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, and I think there's a lot of good potential. And again, if past actions are a good indicator of future performance, you know, look what IBM did with Linux, you know, look what IBM did with Apache, look what IBM did with Eclipse. So I think you're going to see a huge groundswell of activity in support of uh, OpenStack from IBM over the next, again, 12 to 18 months. And I think that you're also uh, going to see a, a lot of additional innovation. The, the market's changed quite a bit, even in the last two or three years, but gosh, especially in the last five plus, right? So open source isn't the new shiny penny that it kind of was even five years ago. But uh, if you look again at some of the social media metrics I put up earlier, or you look at relative other initiatives, um, you know, we're pretty stoked about the potential of uh, OpenStack and what we think it can do uh, for the industry. Any final questions or comments? All right, well, I want to thank you very much for joining us this afternoon and uh, have a good rest of the show.